These videos will take you through completing a first-year cut test using oxyacetylene equipment. Your PPE will include a fire-resistant smock or coveralls, leather gloves, number four or five cutting goggles with safety glasses underneath, and high-top safety footwear with steel toes. Also, hearing protection and a beanie or hat to protect your head. You will also require pliers for handling hot material and a hammer and chisel for removing slag. Oxyacetylene equipment produces a lot of heat and sparks, so before beginning the project, ensure all flammable materials have been removed from your work area. The equipment required for this project will include an oxyfuel cutting outfit similar to the one displayed, as well as a tip cleaner and flint striker. Butane lighters or matches are not permitted in any of the shops for safety reasons. The materials needed are a coupon of 4 by 6 by 3 8 mild steel, a cross section of a 4 inch channel, a section of 3 inch standard S-beam shape, and a sharp piece of soapstone. In the Oxyfuel Cutting ILM, you will find the blueprint for the project. Use the S-shape and I-beam as templates for your layout. When tracing the C-channel, make sure to line up the back of the C with the end of the coupon. This will ensure that you cut the web as well as the flanges of the channel. Follow the manufacturer's recommended procedures to set up your torch. For a combination torch, first open the oxygen valve on the torch fully before purging both the oxygen and fuel lines. With the preheat oxygen valve closed, open the acetylene valve about one half turn and ignite the flame. Increase the acetylene flow until it is just out of the smoke range. Add the oxygen to the preheated flame slowly and adjust the flame to neutral. Depress the cutting lever and if the flame feathers, readjust the flame to neutral with the cutting oxygen lever fully depressed. Check to ensure that you have a clear, straight oxygen jet stream. If it is not straight, shut it down and clean the oxygen orifice. To start the cut, first situate yourself comfortably using your free hand as a pivot point to steady the torch. Rapid oxidation requires that you preheat an edge before applying the oxygen stream to initiate the cut. Since the S-shape drawn on the coupon doesn't have an edge, you will have to create one by piercing a hole inside the pattern. This can be done by the still or traveling torch methods. To begin with the still torch method, first bring the torch in approximately 1 8th to 1 16th of an inch off the plate, taking care not to touch the cones to the surface and preheat. As the piece reaches kindling temperature, approximately 1200 to 1600 Fahrenheit, slowly depress the cutting oxygen lever and raise the tip upwards, one half to three quarters of an inch, as you add the rest of the oxygen. Keep the torch perpendicular, or 90 degrees, to the plate. If you are using the traveling torch method, proceed to cut out the web portion of the S-shape. To produce the optimum results, the idea is to remove all the chalk lines. After completing the web section, move the coupon to the position you find most comfortable. You can then use the edges created to start your cuts in the flange portions of the S-shape. An alternative method would be to use the still torch procedure and cut the shape with one continuous cut. The three inch S shape should pass through the hole you have created with little resistance. This step is an excellent way of assessing your project. Gently remove the slag from the back of the project with a chipping hammer or chisel. If the torch is set up properly, the slag should come off with very little effort. You are now ready to cut a cope for the four inch channel.
To begin your 30 degree bevel cut, either by freehand or using a straight edge, you may want to draw a chalk line approximately one quarter of an inch from the end of the coupon. If using a straight edge, tilt the unlit torch head back to 30 degrees. Place the edge so the oxygen jet stream will remove the line as you complete the bevel cut. After completing your project, shut down the torch according to the manufacturer's specifications. If you are finished for the day, close the oxygen and acetylene valves on the bottles and purge the lines by opening and closing the valves on the torch body before backing off the adjusting screws on the regulators. Quench the project or place it somewhere safe to cool. Check the quality of your cuts by comparing your kerf lines with this chart. Troubleshoot your results with the corrective measures and continue practicing until you begin to achieve the desired result. In order to enhance your results on test day, here are some tips. The first is how to recognize a dirty cutting tip. You will notice when the oxygen cutting lever is fully depressed that the cutting stream in the flame emanates from the middle of the torch and is prevalent straight down the middle of the cutting flame up to a foot. Here is an example of a dirty tip. Notice the cutting stream is short and goes off to one side. To correct this, shut down the torch, inspect the tip for obstructions or debris. Also, check if the cutting orifice may be out of round. Crack open the oxygen torch valve slightly and choose a tip cleaner size that allows you to feel the abrasive surfaces rub as you run it in and out of the orifice. Restart the torch to observe a long cutting stream and resume your cut. Position the coupon to allow the oxygen cutting stream to exit freely. Do not place it in a way that could cause the stream to be blocked by a table or support. Some techniques which may improve your results are as follows. The presence of oxides on the surface of the piece may cause problems as they tend to flake off as the cutting stream approaches. This can be resolved by grinding the surface of the coupon or removing the oxides with the torch before beginning. Care must be taken not to get too close to kindling temperature. Some candidates choose to center punch all the lines, eliminating the problem. Although this method is effective, it is time consuming and all divots must be removed to avoid losing marks. Lastly, make sure to use sharp soapstone for marking your guides. Paint markers produce fumes and do not accurately indicate where the line should be.